When you think of VR gaming, the Nintendo Switch probably doesn't come to mind right away. The Switch and VR have a weird relationship. Because of the detachable Joy-Cons and motion controls, it makes sense that you'd be able to make it work somehow. But the most we've really gotten are some weird Nintendo Labo VR tie-ins hidden in the menus of games like Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. The Labo VR Mario Odyssey experience is just okay. There's not much to do in it, and you can't move around in space, you're stuck in one spot. Well today, I'm going to show you how to build an even better pseudo virtual reality control system with Game Builder Garage. Better because it adds the ability to move around the game world with that same precision head tracking. And if you have Joy-Cons, you can use those for motion controls at the same time. And for those Switch Lite players, or those without a Labo headset or a hat and a lot of duct tape to hold the console up to your face, you can still hold it up to your head with both hands and use this as a sort of motion control first person view. So follow along and I'll show you how to set it up so you can learn how it all works or you can copy the game ID if you just want to jump in and try it. So we'll start out in this mostly empty game world where we have a comment to show you where we're going to put all of our logic inside. And first we're going to work on the camera direction controls. First things first, we need to manage our input. So we'll grab an automatic tilt motion control node on. In the settings, you can have it to check automatically for the best configuration or the console itself. We'll want to keep it analog and we'll switch the range from 0 to 0.5 and we'll have it checking the X axis. Then we can duplicate that node on and open up the settings again and switch the second to the Y axis. We'll want some kind of button or input to reset these axes if things start to go wrong. So in this case, I add a button node on and I use the right stick pressed to reset the tilt controls. You might want to switch this to something else if you end up using separate motion controls for each Joy-Con since that's also the button to reset those. The next thing we're going to do is manage the output from the tilt node on. We'll grab an inversion node on and a map. We'll plug the X axis tilt into the inversion and that into a map. And the Y axis goes directly into a map. On the map for the X axis, we'll keep the input range from 0 to 1 and we'll switch the output range to negative 45 to positive 45. This limits the angle that you can turn up or down with to keep it more natural but you can make it wider, like negative 90 to positive 90, if you want to be able to look all the way up and all the way down. Then on our Y map, we'll switch the output from negative 1 to positive 180 degrees. We can then drop into the advanced cameras and grab our camera direction node on, and plug those two maps in there. This whole setup lets us control the angle of the camera relative to the camera position node on that we'll add in later. If you don't add a camera position or any other camera node on, the basis of the camera will be wherever the programming screen camera is when you hit play. Next, we're going to add in a person and give it some basic left, right, up, down, and jump button controls so that we can move around in the game world. Technically, if we wanted to recreate the Mario Odyssey Labo VR tie-in, this is all you'd really need. You'd place the camera where you wanted, hit play, and you could control the person relative to the camera from that point. You can see it's pretty simple. We're only about two minutes in, and we already recreated the VR experience for Mario Odyssey. What we're going to do next is improve the system by moving the camera position in our game world and having it track the player. We'll add in a location sensor and attach it to our person. Then we'll add in a camera position and a camera target node on. We'll take the X, Y, and Z of the location sensor and plug it directly into the X, Y, and Z of both the camera position and the camera target node on. Finally, we'll need a simple object that we're going to keep at the center of the game world. So we want to get it to position 0, 0, 0 on the X, Y, and Z axes. You can leave this object visible so you can see where it is, but ultimately we're going to make it invisible since all we're doing is using it to reference a position in the world. Really, what we're doing is using the tilt of the Joy-Cons to manipulate a base angle and position for the camera. The base position and angle are going to move around the world relative to the player based on one single starting position. It's a little complicated, but luckily it's easy to implement. So once we hit play, you'll see that it works. It's just a little claustrophobic, so what I'll probably do is make the person invisible. And if we're too low to the ground, you can add a simple object to the top of the player character and then make the location sensor based on that, so that we're a little bit higher off the ground. Things still feel a little too tight, so what we'll do next is we'll change the field of view to make it seem more natural. 
we'll go back into advanced cameras and grab something called the camera angle node on. Here you can change the field of view and you can adjust it and try out different field of views until you get to a camera that feels more natural like any other VR or first person game. Finally, you can also add your head node on like usual and the head node on tracks the position of the camera. So it'll move around the world with your camera. That's what's gonna allow you to then add your motion control arms, add a HUD, add any kind of object that you can attach to the player that's relative to your view. And that's it, the system is done. It's really simple and takes up very few Nodon to get done. Now the fun part is coming up with creative ways to use this. For example, you can use a grabbing hand system so that you can manipulate objects in VR if you have detachable Joy-Cons. This does mean you're gonna need to have the switch attached to your head somehow. You could use some kind of hat with tape, cardboard, or if you have a Nintendo Labo kit lying around, you can slot this right in there. It kind of just feels surreal to be manipulating a 3D VR environment with a Nintendo Switch attached to your head. It's kind of awesome. Or you can do something like a frenetic first-person shooter where you're running through the world and launching projectiles from your viewpoint, like this. Just pay attention to your surroundings. And obviously you can apply this to thriller or horror games where you want to make the player actually feel like they're moving their view around the world with their head. Maybe you can put a secret message or a code on a ceiling or on the floor and have the player feel their way through the darkness. And jump scares or impacts are always going to feel way more interesting when they're in VR. That's it for this build. If you're able to do anything interesting with it or have plans, please share them in the comments. So have fun with it and I hope you have a lovely day.